what about it's fine Kafka. Uh, you you have constantly been warning Zambians not to celebrate the debt restructuring under the UPND. What are your serious concerns that we as Zambians should be should be aware of? They have new bonds that they have put on the table now, maturing 2032, another one maturing 2053. Why 2032? Mr. Hitchlema thinks if he wins in 2026, he will live in 2031. And in his, this whole period, he will not attend to any debt repayment or to these debt repayments for these euro bonds. He pushes another one to 2053. Some of us may not be there by that time. Who are we living with these problems? The future generations. And mind you, it will be a Zambia with a lot of problems in 2053. Probably more problems than we have today. As I've said before, at the current population growth rate of 2.94%, it means that in the next 15 years, our population will more than double. Today, we have 20.6 million Zambians. In 15 years' time, who have not less than 40 million Zambians. If we leave them with a lot of debt and with no proper economic base, how are they going to survive? How is Zambia going to feed its 40 million plus population? What will be the situation with electricity then? What will be the situation with food, health services, education, transportation. What is it that we are doing now to ensure that, you know, in 15 years' time, we'll be able to cope with a doubled population? And it's that doubled population where we are pushing the debt. We are pushing more of our problems, today's problems. Just to ensure that we look good, so that Mr. Hitchlema can look as if he has been a good performer. He doesn't care about the future society. We revolutionaries care about the future generations. We revolutionaries work for the future. Yes, without forgetting the problems of today. When we are addressing the problems of today, we also try to address the problems of the future. We have to think much ahead. We have to think of the generations that will be there when we are not there. Mr. Hichilema doesn't think that way. It's about him being the fixer, being this intelligent, this effective, this efficient person. It's about himself. It's not about others. We have said before that the future is not built in the future. The future is built on the threshold of the decisions and the actions we take today. These actions, these decisions we are taking today on the debt restructuring have an effect, have an impact on the future development of our country and our people. So bear in mind, debt is not just about today. Debt is about tomorrow. Tomorrow's world should matter to us. Tomorrow's Zambia should matter to us. Tomorrow's people should matter to us. Uh, thank you, Doc. Um, you've, you've, you've touched on issues to do with uh, um, being mindful of the future. Zambia is uh, 60 years this year of independence. Mm -hmm. um, what is really happening with, with the police of today, where the opposition uh, have not been allowed to hold any rallies. We have also seen the police have gone further to 
to disrupt church gatherings. And uh, in some incidents, they have, they have said they were mandating and making sure that uh, they're monitoring people who are walking in and out of uh, the church premises. How is, where is this country going? It reminds us of that saying by that uh, German uh, pastor. They came for the socialists. I did not speak out, I did not do anything because I was not a socialist. They came for the communists. I did not voice out because I was not a communist. They came for the trade unionists. I did not voice out because I was, a tra I was not a trade, union trade unionist. They came for the opposition. You kept quiet because you thought it was the opposition. They went for the Catholics. You did not speak out because you are not a Catholic. They went for UCZ. You did not speak out because you are not UCZ. And so on and so forth. Today, they are for no restraint. They are entering any church, any shrine, any sacred thing. The traditional rulers are hit by them. The religious leaders are hit by them. Today, places of worship are not sacred. If you are troubled as a human being, there are people pursuing you. You can take refuge in a church. It should take a lot of diplomatic work to get you out of there because the police should not go and fetch you out. That's a sacred place. In a civilized society, when you are when you are being pursued, you run into the church. And it will give you a bit of time because they have to negotiate with the church authorities to get you out of there. The police doesn't just go there, start breaking things, start stopping the, the preachers. But this is what happens in a society when values are lost, when principles are lost when ethics are lost. You know, the exercise of power must be a constant practice of self-limitation and modest. If you don't limit yourself, if you don't restrain yourself, you are bound to abuse that power. And the abuse of power leads to disastrous consequences to disastrous effects. You are creating a society that soon you will be afraid of yourself. They are creating a society which they will soon be very scared of themselves. It looks okay for them. They think it's the opposition they are harassing. But today, these measures they are taking will boomerang on them tomorrow. You know, this country is not going to be a good country for any of us, a peaceful country for any of us, a decent country for any of us to live in. Unless it's a, a good place for all of us to live in, a peaceful place for all of us to live in, a decent place for all of us to live in. It can't just be for one group. And it's not on it. How can it be that it's only one group with all the virtues? Those who are in power and those associated to them, they have got all the good virtues. Everything is virtuous with them. Only those in the opposition and those associated to them have got all the evils. How? That's not where the way societies are constituted. That's not the way decent societies are built. We need some change. There's need for rebirth. Uh, talking about rebirth, we've talked about um, a society that everyone must be able to feel belonging to. So in this very society, on the society around us, we have marketeers, marketeers that are working very hard to get their goods from their, their farm produce into the market, marketplaces like Soweto. And then uh, reports we are receiving is that uh, these marketeers 
um, cutters from the ruling party are detecting prices on them. They are forcing them to sell their produce at a low price, of which later on, when they buy from them, the, 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 the cutters are reselling them. Um, looking at how this is transparent, the, the, their concern is that out of all their hard work, they are not getting anything from their labor. What is your message? Or what message do you have to government and the local authority and whoever is in charge of these cutters? What is it that is causing these young people called cadres to do what they are doing? If we don't understand what is causing them to do what they are doing, we have difficulties addressing this problem. They mobilized these young people, promised them heaven on earth, and they have dumped them. They have no programs for them, not only for those they mobilized, but for all the young people. There isn't any program that you can say, this is the program that is going to take the majority of our population, which is young, into a better life into a decent life. When people's avenues to decent life are closed or are narrowed, they resort to criminal ways. They resort to bad ways. We had this under PF. We resented it. We didn't like it. And many young people voted PF out of office for that reason, among others. The UPND promised this would be a thing of the past. In their 80 weeks, 80 months in government, they were boasting about having eradicated this. But it's still there. It's still persisting. No matter how much it's being denied, it's still persisting. Why? Again, it requires a remaking of our society. It requires a remaking of our country, a rebirth. We have to start all over again. Things have not gone well. We are now realizing that it take chinja fetch panichile teka na kateka. Ku chinje mi tekele. Ngata tu chinji she mi tekele takule kotulea. Ama problems to kwetelelo, ama, ama afya to kwetelelo. Ta kapwe. Ngata tuchinji she mitekele. Uku chinje mitekele, te kuchinja fechi panichile teka na kateka. We need to bring in more of our, of our people into the governance of our country. The politician has been ruling this country for almost 60 years now. It's very clear politician eka titia kwanishie ukutufunyema problems to kweterelo. We need other leaders of our people to participate. People's participation is through their leaders. We have religious leaders. They need to participate. They represent millions and millions of our people. They are the people who our people when they're in problems turn to. But they don't have the resources, they don't have the, the power to do anything or to do much. We have traditional leaders. They are not participating. And by participating, it's bringing these other leaders, you know, to where the resources are dispersed, to where the resources are controlled. They have to have a say in the governance of our country. Until we involve all our leaders and the best of them in the governance of our country, and involving these leaders is not something we have a choice. It's a must for us. And the people excluding, actually, they are better leaders than the politician. To sala impanda mma families. Isha kuatisha mano, isha temu shavantu, 
ishe aishiwe chalo ishe aishiwe mpange iliko ishe ingasunga avantu evo tupia ni kapa vufumu evo tupia ni kapa li umine mushi timu asanga mfamili muli tuenta ave ipua ave nga piana batu salapo fia unga umo tu salapo impanda imo pakusala bashima pepo we still also go for the best in our families to become priests, to become pastors, to become reverends. Fide efiso oso efi ashiala. Epo to send up a politician. The most crooked, the most shrewd, become the politicians. Those who are well equipped with the mingalato. Aba ishiba kukama, aba navu pamikoshi. Epo to be kapapu tungulushi. If you get your waste people, they are the ones who monopolize power, who you put in the forefront. Can you expect better things in your society? Until we bring other leaders of our people, more authentic leaders of our people, more credible leaders of our people into the running of our societies. Takulia kutulea. Uvupi novu uka kulira kofi. Insala ika kulira ko. Umu ngulu will be the order of the day. Uh, on, on, a, on a lighter note, Doc. Um, over the weekend, there was a big conversation uh, where imperialism was interpreted the same as whiteness. What is imperialism? I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I saw some comments uh, regarding two of my children, or my daughters, who, married, who are married to people who are white, who are not black. Some people were, especially from the ruling part, were saying that's imperialism. It's not the color we have chasing. It's not the ethnicity we are chasing. It's the practices. There are white people who participated in our liberation struggle. There are white people who are liberators. Whiteness does not mean imperialism. Whiteness does not mean exploiter, bad person. No. They are decent white people. God gave us some of them, those white people. God gave us a Guy Scott. God gave us a Simon Zucas here. God gave us many other white people. So imperialism is an exploitative system. It's a system. It's not an individual. Imperialism, imperialism is not an individual. It's a practice. Yes, we had Cecil Rhodes here. He was an imperialist. And he was white. So, that's laughable anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, um, before, before we, 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 we wrap up, um, Emmanuel Jeff Banda, the, the, the mm -hmm. situation keeps on dragging um, today he's been discharged from Enasoko and he's been taken to um, uh, Skanze camp where he's been held in a maternity ward. From whatever has been transpiring, what is your say over the issue of Emmanuel Banda? Justice without compassion is barbarism. Emmanuel has been treated in a very barbaric way. I'm not here to judge what Emmanuel has done or has not done. But he has not been treated like a human being. And he has not been treated in accordance with our laws. He has his enemies clearly in the UPND government who are using the police and all the systems of our criminal justice. 
to punish him. They are actually on the verge of getting him dying. We can lose Emmanuel. He has been pushed as a, to, to almost the limit as a human being. Even those who have committed the worst crimes are never treated that way. Even those who are on treason, they are never treated that way. Emmanuel has been subjected to excessive cruelty. This is not the rule of law that we are promised. Even some of the cases being brought against him, I'm a bit familiar with them because some of them happened when I was still a journalist at the post. We covered them. And some of them involved the people who were working for the post. Those matters were adjudicated upon. And judgments were passed. Eight years, nine years later, some people come and wanted to try JJ for the same things. Where is res judicata? Which says once a matter has been adjudicated upon, the courts have decided you only have one way to deal with it if you are not satisfied to appeal. They never appealed for eight years. They never appealed for eight years. Those who were involved with the matter. JJ saved the judgment that was given to him and it was, it was fined. Some of his collaborators who had much more deeper problems went to jail three years or four years. What more do you want from a human being? But the same way when you have buried someone, they have died. You, they don't come back. You don't go and start exhuming bodies. They will just have to wait for that day of resurrection when our Lord comes back to take them. So you can see that it's not justice that is being pursued in the case of JJ. It's vindictiveness, it's vengeance. Yes, I didn't like what JJ did, but he cannot be punished forever. He cannot be punished forever. He was punished, it ended. Whether we were satisfied or not satisfied with his case, that's it. The courts decided. You can't go back to start arresting him for the same case and -prosecuting, pro prosecuting him again. Prosecuting him again. It's inhuman. The judgments are there. They were published in the media. They were not secret judgments. It's the same thing with the eligibility of President Edgar Lungo. We did not like that judgment. I was, I felt it was a bad judgment. I did not agree with that judgment. To this day, I don't agree with it. But it's a judgment of an apex court. It's a judgment of the constitutional court. There's no court above it where you can appeal. We have to live with that judgment. We have to respect that judgment. It's not only judgments we agree with that we should respect. I emphasize that I don't agree with that judgment. But we have to live with that. That's what the courts are there for. We will not agree with all the judgments of the courts. But we are required to respect the judgments that come from those courts if they are final, and the judgments from the Supreme Court, from the Constitutional Court, are final. Do these courts make mistakes? Yes, they do. There are processes to review those mistakes. 
but it's not the processes of backdoor appeals. It's not an appeal. It's an abuse of the system. They think they have got judges now on, this, on the constitutional court that can back them and get a judgment that they want. If the constitutional court does that, they will be creating a series of problems for our country. Let them stick to the principles of law. Again, it's a case of race judicata. Whether you like Mr. Lungu or you don't like him, he is eligible. The Constitutional Court decided so. Give him his judgment. If you wanted to defeat him, simply organize it in a better way. Deliver to our people the things you promised them. You would deliver. Give them a better life. They will vote for you and not for Mr. Lungu. I will be a participant in the 2026 elections. If God gives, keeps me to that day, I will be a participant. I may have to face Mr. Lungu in, on the ballot paper. We may be together as presidential candidates. Do I want to defeat him? Yes, I want to defeat Mr. Lungu. Do I want to defeat Mr. Ichilema? Yes, I want to defeat them, but I have no right to kill them, legally or otherwise. I have no right to annihilate their participation. That's what multi-party political dispensation entails. Competition. It's not a competition to destroy each other, to kill each other, to annihilate each other, to destroy competition. No. It's competition to save. Let our people choose who they want to lead them. Choose who they trust the most. The most trusted of us should lead. It is not just one person. It can't be just one person, you know. No matter what the merits one person may have. In a multi-party political dispensation, they cannot be the only ones allowed to be on the ballot paper. All of us have the right to get our names on it. Let Mr. Lungu enjoy his judgment. He got his judgment. You can't take it away from him. He's eligible. It's only Mr. Lungu who can decide whether to stand or not to stand, and nobody else. They have taken away the part from him, which was supposed to be his platform, the PF. We all know that is Mr. Kainde who took that part away, who stole that part away. The, UP, the PF today is not under the control of my brother, my nephew, Miles Samba. It's under the control of Mr. Hitchlema using the register of societies. Mr. Hitchlema today, if he wants, he can remove Miles Samba and replace him with another person by simply playing games with the, the register. Again, the intention was to rob Mr. Lungu of a platform, a political platform, to contest the 2026 elections. Why, if they feel they are more popular, why not just let him stand and defeat him? This reminds me of uh, a friend of mine who was working for Reuters as a journalist, Butch. Butch was very close to Buchiza, was very close to Mr. Chiluba. And he was also at the same time close to Dr. Kaunda through family connections as well. He asked Mr. Chiluba when he was trying to change the constitution in 1996, which he indeed changed to bar Dr. Kaunda from contesting elections in 1996. Butch says, why do you want to go through all this? Why don't you just let him stand and defeat him? Mr. Chiluba says, what about if he wins? I hope that's not the same situation, but it looks very much like it. We should not fear to be defeated in an election. It's not a do or die situation, you know. Even when you lose an election, you still live. Mr. Lung lost an election as he died. He's still there. Dr. Kaunda lost an election. He lived up to 90-something. He didn't die. 
It's not do or die. We were defeated badly in the 2021 elections. I'm still there. I've not lost my humanity. I've not lost my life unless they kill me. So let others participate. It's not for Mr. Hichinema to decide who should be on the ballot paper and who should not be. This is, has been decided by the Constitution of the Republic of Zambia, which gives us all the opportunities. Unless the law disqualifies us because we have done A, B, C, D, or we have not done A, B, C, D, we do not meet the requirements of contesting elections. Uh, thank you so much, Doc. Um, your last words as we, as we wrap up, your last message to the Zambians and your followers. We have challenges as a country, as a people, gigantic challenges. Today, for many of our people, they don't know where the sun will set, how it will set. They don't know if it will rise for them. They have a yesterday. They have a troubled today. They don't know if they'll have it tomorrow. Things are bad. Life is hard. There are so many challenges. If you're not a strong person, you get crushed. We are very fortunate. God has given us almost everything that we need to live well, to live better, to have a good life. But we are troubled. We have no food. All the things we need in life are beyond us, are difficult to get. We have even resorted to praying for food. When we are not supposed to be praying for food, Vatila le sata pela kumini wa pala mikafie. Le sana pala mikafie onse. Umushiri usuma, ame nshia ingi, good weather, a young population, but we can't feed ourselves. What we should be praying for is not food, it's for God to give us more wisdom to use what he has given us. But to do better, it requires leadership. But again, we have many people to turn to. We have our Lord Jesus Christ to turn to for what it means to be a leader. We can draw our inspiration from Christ's leadership on what the leaders need to do when people have no food, on what the leaders need to do when people are ill-clad, on what the leaders need to do when people are in despair, are losing hope. Let's not lose hope. Let's not resign ourselves to the challenges we face today. It gets dark sometimes, but the morning comes. Thank you.